I've teamed up with Vital BMX to interview some of the most influential people in BMX. And the first rider that we are interviewing is one of my favorite people in BMX, Dakota Roche. Dak revolutionized modern day street riding by bringing a completely new approach to the game. He used his raw power and creative outlook to open up lines that had never been seen before. Burly drops, wall ride gaps, and impossible grinds put him on the map, but his consistent video parts packed with his signature style earned him a spot as one of the biggest names in BMX. So let's go sit down with Dakota Roche and let's talk about BMX. All right, Dakota, we are currently here in your hometown of Huntington Beach, California. What was it like growing up as a BMX rider here? Um, honestly, you can't ask for a better place to grow up if you want to ride BMX. Like, you know, especially when I started riding in the 90s, this was like the mecca. It was like, okay, Sheep Hills, legendary dirt jumping spot. Um, there's street spots everywhere and as well as some other trails and uh, just kind of having a bunch of dirt lots to build your own jumps at too made things a lot easier. Um, my friends started digging and I was just like, oh, I want to do that. You know what I mean? Like transitioning from like skateboarding for a couple years and then going into BMX. I was like, dude, I can go way faster and jump way further on this bike. So I'm going to go with my friends down to this lot and build these jumps and we're going to do this and it's going to be awesome. So you've been a pro BMX rider for the last 12 years and being a professional, your outlook does change on BMX. What do you miss most about BMX before you're professional? Uh, I think I miss just those times of it not being as stressful and not so much pressure. And it's not even like really outside pressure. It's like you kind of have your, your own pressure that you put on yourself. Like, yo, I want to maintain what I have and I want to keep progressing my own stuff. I want to progress BMX. And uh, I think when you're younger, you're more just like, it's just, it's more of like a fun aspect and less of like, I need to be doing this. And not to say that being a pro isn't fun because it still is, but there is that kind of program running in the back of your mind saying like, Hey, you need to, you need to be doing this. You need to be like getting better and doing better tricks or finding new spots or whatever. And, uh, I think when you're, when you're younger, it's more of like a state of flow. It's just like, you're just flowing with whatever's happening with it. You're like, Oh, I'm getting better in this area. So I'm going to keep working on these tricks. And, um, I think that's not to say that's not happening these days, but you're just more carefree. So you're not like grabbing onto every like negative thought and being like, Oh man, like, you know, I'm not riding well today. You know, it's, it's, that doesn't happen as much when you're younger. It's the job aspect, you know, it, it turns into the way that you are now making money to live your life. So a hundred percent, I've been there. I know, I know what the pressure is like and I completely agree with you. Yeah. So you currently ride for some of the biggest sponsors in BMX. Do you ever like sit back and just think how crazy it is? All the time, all the time. Anytime that thought comes into my mind, I, I'll trip on it for a little bit. I'm just like, this is insane. Like, especially because when I started riding and I started getting into it, it was never like, obviously you have goals and you're like, yeah, I would love to do this. You know, I'd love to be a pro bike rider, but it was never like, all right, I'm going to be a pro. Like, this is how it's going to work. You know, it was just like everything flowed so naturally and got me to this place. And I'm just like, I still, I'll sit back sometimes and I'm just like, how am I here? Like, and it's amazing. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, taking that time to like, for just some, some gratitude and some thankfulness for what you have. It's, it's good. And it, it reminds you of, um, kind of everything that you have and everything that you worked for. Yeah. So like how appreciative you are of exactly. like being able to be in that position. Right. Cause I do the same thing. Like I sit back and I think about it, like, and it's, it's the coolest feeling. It really is. It's like, how did this all come to play? But like, this is awesome. Like, right. I'm so glad I made it in a way. Right. Right. Speaking of sponsors, you are known as one of the most hardworking guys in BMX. You go above and beyond to make your sponsors happy. Where does this come from? I think anybody that I ever looked up to in BMX or outside of BMX could be skateboarding, could be surfing, anything, or just life. Like, you know, such as my dad, like everybody that I look up to is hardworking and they, they do everything they can to maintain what they have and to push it, you know? It doesn't even matter what it is, you know? It could be art, it could be work, it could be, you know, anything along those lines. And uh, I saw that and I just kind of gravitated towards that, you know? It's like, I know in order to kind of maintain my sanity and to stay motivated, I need to, I need to keep working hard at it, you know? Everything relationships, jobs, passions, they all need constant maintaining and constant work. So I guess if you work hard at those things, 
they're going to harvest in ways that they would never harvest if you didn't work hard at them. So um, I just know that, you know, I'm passionate about something. I'm going to work hard at it. That's just the way it goes. So what's something that you were most proud of that's happened in your professional career? Oh my gosh. I could honestly tell you, and I still feel weird. I have it in my room. I have a, a Nora cup. So it's a number one rider award trophy. Um, and I got it for street rider of the year in 2015. And, uh, I still look at that thing and I'm just like, how is this, how did this happen? Like, you know, there's so many insane bike riders out there, so many insane street riders. And, uh, to be kind of grouped in with those dudes on that level, still like, it's, it's sometimes hard to feel that, you know, you don't, you don't want to ever look at yourself like, yo, I'm the best, you know? So it's like, sometimes I go far on the other end of the spectrum and I'm like, I don't even feel worthy sometimes, you know what I mean? So, you know, to have that happen and this is like, this is, uh, I guess just such a huge achievement and something that I never expected to happen. That's like something I'm very proud of. Well, my vote helped you get there. Just letting you know. Yeah, thanks Scotty. Appreciate that. (laughs) To move on from that question, number one rider of the year, as a street rider, you are known to have some of the craziest parts over the years. Looking back, what was your favorite video part and which one are you the most proud of? Man, I put my heart and soul and everything I had into my Colt Talk is Cheap part. Um, I spent two years filming for it, maybe even a little bit more than that, two and a half years. And, uh, you know, swan dove into the concrete multiple times to get this video part done, traveled the world, um, basically just did everything I can to have this part that I was the most proud of. And uh, I think that that one when i look back on my career i'm going to be like that was my video part that um i knew everything that i had was put into that and um you know i was that was a time in my riding where i was like i felt so motivated to just like be the best me that i can be you know it's like you never want to look at yourself and be like yo i need to be the best it's like no you got to be the best you you can be the best version of yourself and uh it was just it was just motivating to me to just be like okay this is going to be that part i could tell like i'm going to do everything i can to make this that part and uh yeah i'm still really proud of that work um and i think i will be i think i'll be as long as i live so that's awesome it's a great part as well man you. you did an awesome job on it thank you through all the video parts you made a name for yourself for having such a unique style and approach to riding where did this come from Um, I think growing up where I did in Huntington Beach and being influenced by like skateboarding and BMX and kind of, you know, not just picking one thing and just enjoying whatever was coming to mind. It's like, oh, if I want to skate today, I'm going to go skate or ride today or surf or whatever it is, um, kind of allowed me to explore different aspects of what I was doing because I've never been like set in one thing. It's never like I'm a strict dirt jumper. I'm a strict skateboarder. And I think that allows you to look at things a little bit differently, you know, like I think, you know, I absolutely love doing wall rides. And I think that came from seeing it in like skate magazines and watching skate videos. Like it was big in the nineties doing wall rides. And, um, that made me want to do it on my bike. I'm like, I don't know, just being open-minded about things and trying different things has, has helped me get to where I'm at with it. And, um, yeah, I, I've just never... I've never wanted to just be like classified as one type of rider. Like if I want to incorporate like some dirt jumping tricks into the streets, like that's what I'm going to do, you know? So where did like the big burly drops come from? Like when did that like just out of nowhere, you know, you're just jumping off this crazy stuff. Like how did that, you know, start in your riding? Uh, Me and my good friend Cody always joke about it because it's like we think about a bike as like it's a gnarly piece of machinery you know what i mean it's like this thing can handle some abuse so why don't you just prove it to people it's like go launch off a roof you know what i mean like you could you could take a 10 foot drop no problem this thing's gonna hold up and hopefully your body will too so i think i think that comes from just seeing what what these what your body and what your bike can hold up to you so know? it was like a trial run it's on a trial this bike run. that turned into you you know, kind of revolutionizing BMX street riding in a way. Like you were known as the guy that was going to go, you know, flying down stuff, flying off stuff, gapping to stuff. So that's pretty amazing that it all came from just you and Cody. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we just talk about it and then it just turned into something. So. All right, so moving on, 
I want to talk about Vans. You've been riding for them for a bunch of years now. How many years? I think about eight years. So eight years on yeah. Vans as a professional rider. But you've actually also done work with Vans, you know, not as a rider. You've made designs that have gone on shirts and the shirts have sold really well. I believe the shirt was the number one selling shirt online for a little while. So how did that all come about? Um, well, it all started because, first of all, very backstory of it was like, I've always been into drawing, you know, and not to say that I've ever felt like I was like, yo, like I'm so good at drawing. It was just something that I loved and it was something that was like mentally helpful for me, especially when I was a kid. I've dealt with anxiety like my whole life off and on and uh, that was something that I could tune into and really just like that's that's something healthy that you can be doing for your mind and it's uh, it's very calming at the same time. So art has kind of always been a huge part of my life, you know, sometimes more than others, but it's been, for the most part, it's been steady my whole life. And uh, basically, um, my first colorway that I had with Vans for a shoe, um, Batters was like, hey, you know, would love to have you like draw something up for a shirt. And uh, just, it was a promo item. It wasn't even going to be sold or anything. It was a giveaway item. So uh, I came up with the slogan, Vans on my feet, wheels in the street, and I wrote it in this font that I kind of created. It's just, you know, something that was unique enough to where I was like, I'm proud of this font, you know what I mean? And uh, a few of the art guys at Vans ended up seeing that, and they were like, hey, like, we're really psyched on that promo shirt you did. Do you mind, like, drawing some stuff? And I was really nervous. I'm like, yeah, I don't know anything about designing, but I love drawing, so I'll just come up with some stuff. And uh, I, you know, the designers had me sit down and show them what I came up with and uh, ended up just showing them some doodles and they were stoked on them and uh, it's progressed into a few different shirts and a few different hats and uh, just some art on some of the shoes that I've had and it's like I still that one's still weird to me because I'm like how did that happen too you know we were talking about it earlier it's like how did you get here kind of thing? That one's weird. That one's <laughs> yeah. like, whoa. Like, like, that's got to be crazy if like you're on the street and you see a random person wearing a van shirt that you designed. That had to have been so crazy. Yeah, it's happened a few times and I'm just like, dude, that's crazy. And it's like, I, I like want to go up and be like, yo, thanks for, yo, thanks for rocking the shirt, bro. But he's like, he doesn't know who I am or anything. You know, it's like, that's the, that's the funny aspect of it. It's just like, which is also the crazy aspect. It's like these people are buying this just because they like it, not because there's like, you know, my name tied to it or anything like that, which is actually really humbling because it's like, whoa, they bought that because they really liked the design and I did that. That's crazy. Like I just like, I don't know. That's something you should be really proud of because that's just the coolest thing ever. It Thank really you. is. So let's talk about BMX in general. You know, the current day BMX, what do you love most about it? I love that people are taking it and like, several different directions you know bmx has like broadened so much there's so many different styles of riding where before it was like i think years ago it was very like cut and dry you know what i mean it was like you know dirt street flatland park bull whatever now it's like there's subdivisions of all that so to see it progress in different ways and to see people like really latch on to certain things that's like maybe the, like their specialty type of riding is cool because that's that's how BMX is going to get bigger and better is if like people are, you know, using their creativity to push it. And what would you say is the worst part of it? Or what would you like to change in BMX? Oh man, some of the stuff with social media is just a little bit out of hand sometimes. I think people really like start arguments that don't need to happen. And like maybe, you know, they're keyboard warriors where like they're just like, you know, they're dissing on it just for the sake of dissing on it just to get reactions and it's like that's with a lot of things in life and with social media so i can't really just narrow that down to bmx but it's you know it's, but it's part of it though it's, it's part of it and it's unfortunate because like you know if anything we should be like helping each other push it and like you know i'm not saying like oh positivity but it's like i mean i don't know point out point out the good parts of bmx and focus less on like the negative sides of it because no matter what you do in life, no matter what you're involved in, there's going to be those downsides to it, you know? So I think if we shine some more light on kind of some of the great things that are happening with BMX and, you know, how cool it is, I think that would be better. So if you could give advice to all the young riders out there on a way to enjoy BMX more, to, you know, get more fun out of it, what would you say to them? 
I think you just got to focus on the elements of it that you find enjoyable sometimes. You know what I mean? Because I think sometimes we get so caught up in like pushing it or trying to push ourselves that we forget like, oh, wow, I'm pushing myself too much and I need to refocus my attention on like the things that I enjoy most about BMX, you know? Like, for instance, on days where I'm like show up to the skate park and I'm instantly like trying hard tricks right when I get there, which happens a lot and it's like very frustrating because I didn't even warm up yet and I'm trying like some stupid tech thing that's like way beyond my abilities, <laughs> you know? Um, I'll have to like calm down for a second and be like, okay, like what are the things I like about riding? Like, oh, I like wall rides. So I'm gonna go do some wall rides and loosen up and kind of just refocus your attention on those things, the fun aspects of it, like being with your friends and like kind of practicing that gratitude. So my next question for you is, who is your favorite rider of all time and what makes that rider so memorable? Hands down, Mike Aiken. He was my biggest influence uh, growing up, whether it be with street riding, trail riding, skate park riding, any of that stuff. He is by far one of the most well-rounded, stylish BMXers that has ever graced this planet. And I'm not, I don't say that about just anybody, like this is the guy, you know? And if you don't know who he is, do your research, look him up, he is the guy. Anytime that he would put out any new video parts or any new footage in general, like I was always just like, glued to it i'm just like all right this is this is how i want to ride this is you know this is a one of my hugest influences ever in life you know even down to his like dude i would like steal his clothing and stuff i'd be like oh yeah he dresses sick i want to look like that i want my bike to look like that so and you know i don't even feel lame saying that like that's how important he was to bmx and to me you know Totally agree with you, man. He was something else. So Dakota, thank you so much for doing this interview. I'm glad that we got you to do this interview first because I think you do such a great job of representing BMX. But I've got one last question for you. In the future, when people think back on Dakota Roche, how would you hope to be remembered? <sighs> Honestly, I just want to be remembered as somebody who put their heart and soul into BMX and hopefully it shows, you know, like hopefully it shows in my video parts and, you know, anything that I put out and just kind of more along the lines of like the work ethic and the creativity um, that I've kind of dedicated into BMX and uh, less about like, oh, you know, you see all those tricks he did and more about like, yeah, you know, like this dude, you could tell he loved BMX and you could tell his heart and soul was in it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this interview with Dakota Roche. If you guys would like to follow Dakota Roche, you can follow his Instagram that's going to be right here at the bottom of the screen. He's constantly posting up different trips and different video parts that he's working on. And if you guys want to go back and look for Dakota Roche footage, you guys can go and find it online easily. So this is the first interview of many, so stay tuned for the next one.